In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about managing audio moth or autonomous recordings and looking for time of what we would call the dawn chorus or the timing of the earliest bird vocalizations in the morning. Even outside of breeding season, there's often some period of time at which birds start vocalizing um, at or around or a little bit after sunrise. And so we're going to um, look at how to use some of the tools from our recordings and, and tools available and our recordings to look for that. Now, in this specific case, we're looking at winter dawn times in the Pacific Northwest uh, in Olympia, Washington. In the middle of winter, dawn is happening somewhere in the area of 730 in the morning. So we're going to start with that as, as some knowledge um, for how to search. So I'm going to share the screen. And I'm going to go to these, this folder of audio moth recordings. And the recordings have a set naming system for audio moths with the year, the month, the day, and the start time of the recording in hours, minutes, and seconds. And so we can know the time that the recordings were started by just looking at the file names. Now, if I'm looking for um, the start of the morning bird singing, I'm gonna be looking not later in the day, but earlier, sometime in the morning. And so the, these are recordings starting at five o'clock-ish in the morning. And so I'm gonna to go to about, this, these were taken at the end of 2021. I'm going to start at, um, let's look at 7.30. And so I wanna open this file in a visualizer. I'm gonna show you first how to do it in Raven Light. So here's Raven Light. You can um, either drag the file in or actually open it through the file open, opening option in Raven Light. And here we have the oscillogram and the spectrogram. And I really mainly want to look at the spectrogram. And I'm actually going to adjust some of these settings here. I, I'm going to adjust the color scale. So in Raven Light, you can actually adjust the scale at which you're viewing these sounds. Um, and I'm going to change the contrast a bit so that certain sounds are highlighted. And I will zoom in on about one minute sections of sound, okay? And so first it's important to know what sounds you're looking at. These look like environmental sound, but we can listen to the sound. Let's start it here. Yes, this is water dropping. But what, a, what about this? Okay. That is the sound of an American robin. And so by looking at that, I can see in the 730 recording, there is a bird vocalizing and I can scan across that recording or I could reduce it down, um, zoom it back out. Okay, that's an Anna's hummingbird. So in this 10 minutes of recording, there's more than one bird vocalizing. also an Anna's hummingbird. Okay, so that's 7.30, I'm seeing sounds. And so I can go to an earlier time now because I'm documenting there's definitely bird sound at 7.30, look at 7.20 in the morning. And it's really just a process of picking a time and looking for the sounds. And when there's no sounds, you can go forward in time. And when there are, you can go backward. And I often look at right around dawn as the, as the start point. And so again, I'm adjusting some settings so that I can see the sounds a bit better. And I'm zoom in. And here, okay, I see some sound. This is still that water drop sound. That is bird vocalization for sure. Okay. 
Here's another. That sounds like an American robin right there. So we have a few sounds that keep showing up. They look very much like the sounds I've already played, but you can listen to them. And you can see there are a number of sounds at 720. Okay. So we go back earlier. So it's simply this process and um, it can become pretty fast once you get used to what you're looking for. And um, for sake of time, I'm just gonna adjust the settings on this. So you can actually see it in this scale here. Zoom in. It's maybe a scale that some people like better. Again, these are the water sounds, of water dropping. So whenever I adjust the scale, I tend to listen to these marks that I think I recognize. And in this one, I'm not, maybe here, I'm not seeing a lot of bird sound. And it's still water dropping. So just to make sure, I'm gonna go back to the color scale that works best for me. And just double check. And I'll do this and I'll also zoom out. And I'm not actually seeing any distinct signatures of bird sound here. So this is a 10 minute time span where I'm not seeing marks of bird sound. You, if you wanted to make absolutely sure you could listen to the whole sound, but at this point, I'm gonna go back another 10 minutes. And until I feel certain about it, I'll often go back, you know, 20 minutes or so um, before the sounds, um, before the, the recording where I see my first sounds, just to be sure. And there's always a judgment call of what we call the dawn sounds or the dawn chorus. Um, and um, I call it whenever you have a period of um, a few minutes where there's multiple vocalizations because you can sometimes in the middle of the night a robin or a thrush may make a sound and may sing a couple of times and then there's hours of silence in between um, that I wouldn't call a dawn song because it's in the middle of the night um, and there's nothing that sort of lengthens out into to more different kinds of sounds from different birds so again I'm going to zoom in this does not I'm at first scan here I see something here, but it looks like car noise to me. It's low frequency noise. And I can put my, listen to that just to be sure. Yes, that looks like car noise. That is car noise, that's the sound. So now I'm gonna zoom in just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And scanning across this recording. Now, what we don't know is, you know, with one recorder at one location, we can't say something absolute about the whole area. But we can certainly say at this spot, the earliest sounds were happening in the 720 recording. You know, I see a few dark smudges down here. But that's indicating more distant car noise. and not seeing anything here. Again, if you wanna be absolutely certain, you could go back further in time, but that's how you do it. And so um, Raven Light is a great tool for viewing spectrograms like this. If you um, we'll go back and pull in the recording from 720, and um, if you want to start annotating that recording, you could um, using the selection table. And again, I'm gonna change my settings just a little bit. Okay, 
Okay. This looks like the first sound. That's a bird sound. There it is. So if I want that to be something that I'm collecting information on, and I may collect for a certain amount of time the different vocalizations, I can select this vocalization using a selection tool. And depending on what you want to measure, you may want to select in as close as possible. And when I do that, you can see there's a table down here that starts to populate. It, and the, the default data is the beginning time of the sound, the end time, and it's really of the selection. Within the selection, the highest frequency and the lowest frequency. And then I could add an annotation. Sound of a bird or something. And then you can keep adding selections. Oops, I didn't. Okay. And then you can move on and select, make other selections, and they, it'll keep populating the table. So here's the second sound. Okay. Then you could go on and on and have this data populated into a table. So that's some one of the great uses of um, Raven for taking this kind of data. If you do not have Raven, there is this free version that we're using here that's Raven Lite, but you could also use Audacity, which is another sound editing software. And you can do very similar work in Audacity, visualizing files. It doesn't have that nice annotation um, option, but you can um, just open up an Excel file or some spreadsheet document to collect that information. Now, you don't get two views automatically in Audacity, but you can change your view from this type of oscillogram to a spectrogram from this little drop down menu. And you can't adjust the um, intensity, the, the contrast, or anything either. And something I'm noticing here is that I need to actually adjust. Actually, I think I'm probably okay, but um, it would be useful to adjust the frequency band on the um, y-axis to be a little higher. But I think all the sounds that we would document in here are probably already viewable. And so here's our spectrogram. And I'm just going to see if I can see that same first vocalization. It's right here. Okay. And so we don't have that great selection tool, but we can document and we can actually note the beginning and the end by looking at the information down here in the bottom bar of Audacity. So a lot for a lot of what we need, you can also use Audacity. It would it's going to take a few more steps collect the information, but you can still get it.